Hello, welcome to the Free Thought Forum. Um, I'm your host, uh, Brian Fields, and with me is uh, my co-host, Jenna Flora, um, where we talk about, well, anything related to free thought, atheism, ag agnosticism, dogma, uh, all sorts of related uh, uh, topics. And uh, we'll open uh, tonight with our news. Uh, first, uh, I have fantastic news. The first US church official ever has been convicted of hiding priests from sex abuse investigations. Uh, the Monsignor William Lynn, a former secretary for the clergy at the, in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, some of you may have already known that he was on trial. Uh, the announcement came out today that he got three to six years for covering up sex abuse. Um, considering, uh, uh, what was involved, I, I'm, I think that's a little light, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. It shows that uh, uh, that it will not be tolerated, that it, this type of institutional uh, use of uh, uh, the cover of some institution to say, well, no, uh, we, we will take care of this type of thing internally, it just doesn't get tolerated. I mean, and it shouldn't be tolerated. And uh, so this is definitely a step in the right direction. I think so. And on, on the, you know, talking about the sex abuse scandals, um, Penn State just got handed their um, NCAA sanctions. Yeah. And they really got, you know, I, I don't know how people feel about that, whether they think it's too lenient or not, but they are going to pay $60 million in fines uh, that will go towards sexual abuse programs across the nation. There's going to be a reduction in the number of football scholarships for the next four years, an exclusion from any bowl games for the next four years. And they are, have, they are vacating every one of Penn State's wins from 1998 to 2011. Yeah, and what that means is that uh, Coach Joe Paterno, on his record, loses 111 wins from what had been a total of 409 victories. And it's the most of all time in major college football. And you know this goes back to the whole dogma thing. You know we were just talking about the the Catholic Church, but there isn't much difference in what was going on with the Penn State and the fact that you had an institution that was regarded as more important than uh, the the welfare of these children. And even today, you know there are many people who are decrying uh, the harm supposedly that, that Joe Paterno's legacy has taken from uh, this, from covering this up. But I mean, I, I think that if you're gonna consider somebody's legacy that you need to consider the entirety of their legacy, including those things that they've you know, done right and done wrong. Exactly. And, uh, uh, then, and, and if you consider that, then what that means is that we're not dealing with the harm to his legacy, we're dealing with the entirety of a legacy in which Joe Paterno has done some harm to, which I think is perfectly reasonable for the public to consider. And you know, it's unfortunate that um, the uh, that the college football program itself uh, has has taken this hit. But you know, if you allow for um, uh, this type of uh, uh, for for this type of approach to go unpunished. I mean, it sends a message that, you know, it's okay for, uh, for you to try to handle this institutionally. And, you know, okay to cover things up. it's okay to cover things up. And, you know, there's, gonna, there's not gonna be any liability or anything that happens to the program. So, I mean, I think this really sends the message that, you know, if you are going to consider the damage you're going to do by covering stuff up, you have to consider what you're going to be doing to the program. And I think the only people that, that really are to blame here are those officials that covered it up. And exactly. you know, you, you can't really blame the NCAA for, for doing this. It's something that needed to be done, I, I think. I agree. Well, and also the, um, the university itself took steps. They, um, they did remove Joe Paterno's statue Right, and that is being put into storage, and um, you know, and like you said, you have to consider everything that that person's done, and and this is just not something that um, that should be tolerated exactly. at all. Exactly, um, it ruins a lot of lives. 
So um, we have a few new stories, though, that really um, help us jumpstart right into our topic, which we were going to talk about same-sex marriage and religious implications and um, some of these news stories we have, uh, I think, are a great introduction to our topic. And uh, first of all, Chick-fil-A came out. <laughs> well, they didn't quite come out. Well, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. I, I think they stayed firmly in the closet, but uh, uh, if you want to uh, well, expand on that. Well, actually, Chick-fil-A, they, uh, the, they came out and said um, that they're, they're in support of the biblical Biblical terms on marriage, and they do not support same-sex marriage. And um, so, of course, after this story broke, the Muppets, the Muppets, the creators of the Muppets, the Jim Hansen Company, they they had a deal with Chick Fil A, and they were off, they were offering their toys, and well, they they pulled out of that deal, stating they they did not support that. Right, and in fact, I think the president of the Jim Henson Company had is is a has gone on the record as being a strong supporter of uh, gay rights and GLAD and and gay marriage and and things like that. And they thought that you know uh, the Chick Fil A's stance on gay marriage was bigoted and and intolerant. And uh, but the very uh, what I think is is most telling is. Uh, Mike Huckabee has called for a national Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day. And the reason why he says that we should have that is that he's had enough of what he's called the vicious hate speech and intolerant, intolerant bigotry aimed at Chick-fil-A. So what he's saying is that criticizing someone who is intolerant and bigoted is itself hate speech. So apparently, if you're a bigot and somebody says you're being bigoted, that's hate speech. And I'm sorry, no. It's that, that, the truth. <laughs> it's, you just can't run away truth. from it. It's the truth. It's absolutely fascinating. So um, I, I'm actually not going to announce what day it is. Um, if you're really interested, it's on his Facebook page, but I, I prefer not to support this. Maybe it should this. be on a Sunday. Since they're closed on Sundays, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if it is, but I, but I, but I'm not going to tell you. You can find yeah. you can find that information uh, well, on Huckabee's website if you want to. You know, I mean, I I personally I am not a fast food chain eater, so <laughs> you know whatever happens to Chick Fil A happens. I don't care. But if a, if a gay couple walked into their restaurant or their facility, and I mean, I mean, and the 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 CEO was there, is he going to tell them to get out? No, well, what they're saying is, yeah, and, and I mean, I understand what you're saying, and, and it's funny because that, I, if I remember correctly, that was actually brought up uh, to Chick-fil-A, and they, said, they essentially said some of the effect of, well, we don't have any problems serving gay couples. We just don't want them to get married. And, and so, yeah, they'll take your money. You know, yeah, if you want to go to Chick-fil-A and spend your money, they're a business. They're going to take your money. They just think that you shouldn't have equal rights. So, I mean, I think you should use that in your decision-making to decide whether you think that's appropriate or not. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, I, I, really, um, I really do think what the, what the Muppets did, though, uh, the, 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 the company, I really do believe that what they did uh, shows just a lot of support for just human rights in general. Right. I mean, and I guess a company that supports a, a pig and a frog marrying, you know, would, you know, support a same-sex marriage as well. But, I mean, that, I think that's just I, – I posted on my Facebook page. I got really angry at Chick-fil-A when that first broke, and then the Boy Scouts came out and said, okay, we're, we're done with this debate. No homosexuals. We do not honor that. Right. So, of course, I got really upset, and I posted on my Facebook page that I was so tired of the intolerance – Mm -hmm. that that was that I keep seeing all the time. Right. And I got a I got a, a post stating, well, maybe you're the one being intolerant. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? Maybe you're right. I'm intolerant of intolerance. Yeah, there you go. You and, know? And, and it's funny, you know, Boston Mayor uh, Thomas Menino went, went so far to tell the Boston Herald that uh, Chick-fil-A doesn't belong in in Boston. And, you know, you can't have a business in the city of Boston that discriminates against a population. And he said, according to the Herald, we're an open city. We're a city that's at the forefront of inclusion. 
And I mean, I think that's really the right attitude to have. I mean, you, if you're going to uh, claim that you have some sort of special protected rights, and that's really what Christians are saying here. They would prefer to have a protected class for the definition of marriage that includes exactly what their particular morality claims is appropriate for marriage. And it's not even consistent with the historical definition of marriage. I mean, you know, in the Bible, arranged marriages were common, marriage of a man to multiple wives and, and yeah. several other things that today we would say, well, that's immoral. But the, the idea that uh, a marriage is a marriage between two people strictly for love is a recent invention. It is a product of, uh, you know, 20th, 21st century thinking. It is not, uh, it, it, up until, you know, the, the, uh, the 1900s, it was not common. I mean, what was common was arranged marriages. What was common was uh, uh, marriages of convenience and, and business and... and uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Before I came in, I decided... I need to look up the definition of marriage. Mm -hmm. Of course I did. And, and of course you'll find in any standard dictionary it's going to say um, the, the union of, of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You know, it does say that. It, or, and, then it does, and then it goes below and says the art of being married, you know. I mean, right. um, however, if you go to Wikipedia, and mm -hmm. Wikipedia is a very neutral site, you know, they, they're just there to... For the most part. Pretty, yeah, to, to just get out. And they have a different definition of it. They don't really define it as a union between a man and a woman or a, or a, a union between two same sexes. They actually pretty much give you the whole history, mm -hmm. just like you were stating of how, you know, there's, there's polygamy, there's, there's other things going on. And now in the 21st century, we are, we are looking at states that honor the uh, same-sex marriage. Right. And uh, I thought, too, before we got into the religious implications of same-sex marriage, we might want to focus on the economical issues surrounding same-sex marriage. So why don't you tell us more about that, Jen? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just think this is incredible. I, I, just, I, I absolutely, I, I, you know, fell upon this story. Mayor Bloomberg... Um, he came out. Well, actually, let me let me give you a little bit of background. In New York, they have same-sex marriage. Yeah, that is allowed. It's actually the one-year anniversary, I believe, just recently happened for for the same-sex marriage in New York. Well, wait until you see what happened this year mm. in New York. Um, let me let me give you a little bit. Let me see if I can find what he said. Marriage equality. This is from Mayor Bloomberg. Marriage equality has made our city more open, inclusive, and free and has also helped to create jobs and support our economy. New York has always been a great place to get married, and since the pa passage of the Marriage Equality Act, we're welcoming more and more couples, their families and friends, from around the country and world. And you know, he would be right. They, um, let's see, in their first year, they have generated 16 million in revenue for the city. In, for same-sex marriage. That's 16 million for the city. I think uh, they estimate that possibly they have made 259, 259 million has been the overall economic impact. Well, marriage is big business. I mean, th there's no doubt that uh, uh, economically that, that it actually, you know, look, if you take any population and you say, well, we're going to uh, take services we're going to we're going to apply those from one segment of the population to a larger segment that's inclusive of people who will definitely use those services you're going to have an increase of uh income you're, you're going to have uh, a benefit to the economy and and that's purely on economic basis but i mean even even aside from the economic value of it uh what you have is Fairness. I mean, there is nothing mm -hmm. different. Yeah, you, you. If you take a look at two, a man and a woman who love each other and and are trying to have a household and and deal with their economics or deal with the you know all of the uh, uh, 
consequences of having a loving relationship, caring for someone who's in a hospital, uh, funerary uh, arrangements, things like that. These are all things that are identical to a relationship between a man and a man or a woman and a woman or uh, anything like that. What you've got here is there is no reason, no rational reason that the definition of marriage needs to be limited to a man and a woman. Now, some I've heard the argument, well, you've got uh, uh, the ability to raise children, which, of course, there are plenty of heterosexual couples that cannot have children or they adopt or... Or they choose not to. Or choose not to have children. Nowadays, the, the idea of marriage is commonly understood to be one of a couple, however you want to define it, that wants to enter into a mutually beneficial arrangement for the purposes of love. There is a love component to marriage nowadays that didn't happen to be there in the past. Once you expand the definition of marriage to include a couple who loves each other and wants to enter into that kind of relationship, then you cannot deny that same right to any couple or, you know, I mean, I would argue that argue that as long as it was uh, 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 consensual mm -hmm. and a, a group yeah, that wants to enter into that kind of loving relationship. If love is the component that you use to make the decision as to whether a couple can get that kind of benefits, then any kind of relationship that would involve a loving relationship should be acceptable in legal terms and able to be entered into as as that type of contract, and I, I th right, and and well, this you know again, this is why uh, I this whole debate being in the political arena mm -hmm. is extremely upsetting because the, the the debate basically centers around the religious mm -hmm. and the Bible stating uh, its views on uh, same sex relationships. Right. Okay. So. This is where it all, and, and I mean, we can see in the Chick-fil-A the biblical definition. So mm -hmm. we know, you know, we have proof now this is where it's coming from. It's coming from a religion. Right. It's coming from a, a, a belief. The, the idea of a man and a woman being as the, the unit of marriage. Exactly. And um, so in, in, in if we put that to the political arena, we're not supposed to be supporting or not supporting religion in this mm -hmm. country. Well, this is a clear support of religion by telling same-sex couples that they can't get married. Right. And you know, what we need to start looking at and what the, what, the, um, what the religious need to start looking at, they need to start realizing that their beliefs just aren't felt by everybody. Right, exactly. And because of that, why should everybody else have to suffer? Why should everybody else have to suffer because they believe in this? And there's a lot of religions out there that said, you know what? Come on over to our church. We like gays. Yeah. We love you guys. Come on in, you know? So now there's a lot of religions opening up their doors and saying, hey, you can still believe in God and be gay because, you know, it was, it was all a misunderstanding, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so now you have... A, this fight going on between churches and you have this fight going on between human rights, you know? So actually this shouldn't even be in the political arena. Marriage should just be for two people who love each other that want to get married. Right. I mean, that want to be together. What am I saying? They want to be together. How, uh, you know, what is that going to do to this world if we allow people who love each other to get married? Right. Uh, that's not going to affect you know, that's not going to negatively affect the world. Right. I, I, it's not going to negatively affect the population. It's not going to negatively affect anything. Exactly. So I, I do want to point out, you know, above me here, right, right about there, there's a phone number. Um, if you're watching this program and uh, you want to comment, this is a live show. So uh, feel free to give us a call and uh, we will talk to you and you can weigh in on this uh, issue and uh, we, we'd be happy to hear from you. So uh, please give us a call. The number is 717-846-5067. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, oh, yeah. And it, it would be interesting if, if um, I'd like to know in this area, 
what what you know what's it what is the support is the support for same sex or is the support against and you know if, if you're against it don't be afraid to call and we're not going to jump on you or anything like that well not too badly <laughs> um but yeah uh you know i think that if government is going to be in the business of marriage at all and and there is i think there's a def- decent argument for saying that um you know okay the religious want to claim the term marriage they want to get it out of the government government's hands i think it'd be perfectly reasonable if the government's involvement in all of those rights that get associated with marriage is just simply released if you had the idea of everybody gets a civil union and then if a church wants to marry a couple as a religious recognition of of that fine as long as the law exactly. as long as the law recognizes the rights of a couple exactly the same as everybody else and that definition is applied universally so you know people who are are in effect married now well let's say the government doesn't call it married only the religious institution does or non-religious institution because under that definition folks then atheists could get married because atheists will have people perform the exact same ceremonies so you wouldn't deny the, yeah, yeah, the so- institution of marriage from anybody. The churches would choose to agree to marry someone or not. I agree. And when you stop to think about it, that's pretty much what the states are doing now. It's a civil union. Yeah. It's, okay, we recognize you. You guys want to be together, and we're going to give you your tax breaks, and there you go. Well, and that, that, that is you unfortunately know, not true um, in, in, you know, in some states it is true. Yeah. But m- for the most part, right now, we have an institution of marriage that is codified in the law that you get you know such and such rights visitation rights you get the right of inheritance and and other various rights but um if you are not married in states that offer civil unions for gay couples uh if you are not married you are still missing out on a and on a plethora of rights so civil unions as a, as a as they currently stand are not a solution because it's still there's still an inequality of the two right but for um, uh, for those states where that allow actual gay marriage, obviously that's equal. You've got gays getting married, and you've got straight couples getting married, and, that, and that's perfectly fine. But I think that you know, if you have a problem with your definition of marriage being defined by anything other than the church, then the government should get out of the business of getting get marrying people, or it should be the way it is in those states that have accepted gay marriage. That is, that the term marriage refers to a legal concept, not a moral concept. And because the, I think, I'm going to offer my opinion, the, that government has no business legislating morality. And that's the bottom line. You know, um, what the government should be legislating is those things that we... Uh, would accept as uh, uh, literally true by the law for people as a whole. You cannot have laws for certain segments of the population and not for others. You cannot establish a law for heterosexual couples and a different one for homosexual couples. Well, and, uh, you know, I I think uh, one of the arguments I I continue to hear about same-sex marriages, well... Uh, uh, again, I'm going to have to, you know, refer back to religion, and, and it's going to be, well, if we allow this, mm-hmm. y- you know, we are just asking for more trouble. Because we're, we are, you know, we are allowing this kind of, uh, and all of a sudden the word is escaping me that I want to use here. <laughs> you know, it's just locked in my brain, and it's not coming out. Folks, it's tougher being up here than, than, than <laughs> you might think, uh, so, so bear with her. Give her a moment. <laughs> yeah. Let her think it through. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if if we allow same sex marriage, then then obviously we're, we're allowing all these uh, sins to to take place. I mean, they're just gonna. It's it's like allowing the devil to run rampant on on earth. I mean, isn't it? Well, and that's that's the reason why I said morality must not be the basis of law. You know, the basis of law should be you know based in what we would understand to be rational principles. Don't kill somebody. Don't steal from them. Those aren't moral things. Those are things that help us as a society. That's, that's what laws are for. 
But when you talk about, well, you shouldn't have sex a certain way because God may not want it, that, that rule doesn't have any secular basis in law. It's a, a specifically a religious rule. It's something based in mythology and legend. Um, and so I, I think that it makes it, it, the only way laws can be fair is if those laws are based in our secular constitution, in our idea of this, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't turn religious ideals into crime or into crimes because that is wrong. We, we, we think that is wrong. And the reason why that's wrong is because, well, whose religion do we then pick? Do we pick the Sharia law Mm-hmm. You know that many of us would not want to live under, and I don't think I'd have a difficulty making that argument for any caller that came in. Uh, phone number, just as an FYI. Um, we nobody would argue with me, I think, around here to say that Sharia law should not be the law of the land. Well, that's true, and neither should Christian law. Christian Bible should not be the law of the land either. And the same would go for Muslim law. And this, any yeah. you can pull, you can pull out of your hat whichever one you want to. Exactly. And, and and so when you accept the argument that we have a separation of church and state, that the laws that are created in our country are based in secular ideals, the idea of you know addressing you know what we need rather than what should be, then you start to get a little conservative about the types of laws you want to make. And, you know, those people who call themselves conservatives should pay attention because um, how can you be conservative and legislate morality? You know, that if you're concerned about government, why are you telling, you're asking the government to, you know, control what goes on in the bedroom or what goes on in a relationship or well, what goes know, on. Speaking of government controlling what goes on in the bedroom, uh-huh. I don't know if they still have this law. I know it was still up just recently. Mm-hmm. But in Texas, it's against the law to have anal sex. It was. It went to court, and I believe that one was struck down, but I'm checking right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's still on the books or not. Well, how, you know, would you enforce a law like that? Just because you have a homosexual couple, that doesn't mean they're engaging in anything. Well, yeah. and how, how do you enforce that kind of a law? And then, you know. Yeah, it was in a six, it was in Lawrence v. Texas. Um, the, the Supreme Court struck down the sodomy law in Texas and by extension invalidated the sodomy laws in, in a total of uh, 13 states. So while, even while they may still be on the books. They're not. They're not enforceable. Well, how, how can you enforce it when the pornography industry... You, well, that, I mean, <laughs> ironically, you... that was exactly what they tried to do for a long time is, is legislate pornography based on uh, the sodomy laws and various other, uh, uh, you know, uh, religious morality-based laws. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think it's, it's to our credit as a nation that the, our Supreme Court has seen the wisdom of of staying out of the bedroom. Exactly. And uh, yeah, so this was in, uh, uh, yeah, in 1986, they upheld a sodomy law in Georgia. Okay. Uh, And then in 2003, it was Lawrence v. Texas. They they struck down the sodomy law in Texas and invalidated all the other ones. Um, And they explicitly said that Lawrence v. Texas overrode the Georgia, the Georgia decision, um, and that it, they, they essentially decried the idea that the, that court did not uh, view the liberty interest, the idea of the freedom, the constitutional freedom of, of sexual privacy, that the previous court had not considered the idea that you know, we as a population have the liberty to do whatever we're going to do in our bedroom. <laughs> and so uh, essentially they, they struck it down and, and uh, uh, any, sex, any sex act 
that is mutual, uh, mutually consenting and done in private between a, two adults is completely legal in the United States. Right, and, and, and isn't that just the way it should be? Exactly. I, and, you know, I think the key terms here is consensual adults. Exactly. Okay, that is the, the two key terms. Yeah. You know, in, in any, you know, in, when you have two consenting adults, what, what happens in the bedroom? is none of anybody else's business. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. I'm, I'm reading some more information on the Wikipedia article. Uh, as late as 1970, Connecticut denied a driver's license to a man for being an admitted homosexual. Um, as of oh. 1960, every state had an anti-sodomy law in 1960. Um, the, in 1961, the American Law Institute's uh, model penal code advocated repealing those laws uh, as they applied to private adult consensual behavior. A few, days, a few years later, the ACLU took its first major case in opposition, and most ju judges were largely unsympathetic. In uh, 1965, the Supreme Court struck down a law barring the use of contraceptives uh, and then drew on the Fourth Amendment's protection of private homes for search and seizures uh, and the Fifth Amendment's guarantee of due process and the Ninth Amendment's assurance that rights not specified are retained by the people. And, and th this is a very important uh, right here, uh, the, the, the Ninth Amendment, because um, that right to privacy that we hear about, you know, that we have, is not in the Constitution. It's not explicitly written in the Constitution. But the Ninth Amendment essentially says that any right that's not in the Constitution we have. You know, I mean, if, if we cl declare that we have a right to privacy, we have a right to privacy. Right. And there has to be a law explicitly against that right in order to uh, deny that right. And uh, uh, we retain that right uh, through further uh, court action. And uh, at, at this point in time, you know, it's it's surprising to me, you know. Um, you know, you, you, there's a difference. But when you talk about conservative, you, there's a difference between socially conservative people and and uh, fiscally conservative people. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of um, uh, libertarians claim to be conservative, but they claim to be to do so being uh, fiscally conservative. And there's a lot of Republicans that are more fiscally conservative than socially conservative. And you know, it it runs the spectrum, but. Uh, uh, the, those, I, I would think that you know a conservative that says, well, let's say government should tell people what to do with their own morality. I think is 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 not a actual conservative position, but a fascist position, and that is that is something that should raise hackles and start referring to uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Hitler and so on and so forth, because that's exactly what it is. When the state is telling you what you can do. Uh, and can't do in with your own body and in the privacy of your own home, uh, then it's something that we should be and, uh, concerned about. And and you know the states that still don't give us, uh, you know, uh, same-sex couples the right to marry, mm -hmm. um, like this one. Like yes, like this one. Uh, it it just it, I wonder what people are thinking. They don't want a socialist society. They mm. they don't want any of these. They want their their democratic society. Mm -hmm. However, they still want, you know, we can have our democratic society, by the way, as long as you believe what I believe. Mm -hmm. Then we can all have, then we can all freely choose within this little box. Right. You know, um, but that is a socialistic society. To, to pull someone in and, and want them to believe what you believe. And then, and, and. Well, that's a fascist society. Well, yeah. And which isn't necessarily socialist. Uh, it's actually, I mean, there's there's a couple terms that get thrown around without people usually understanding what they are. You have statist, which is essentially a um, the idea that society should be leaned more towards government, mm -hmm. okay, and the government telling you what to do. You got fascist, which is kind of along the same lines, except it's it's you know government uh, passing laws uh, to uh, control various aspects uh, of your life. Uh, to, you know that the, an absolute government control over the population, right. um, and uh, uh, hang on one second. You getting up the definition of? Uh, no, I was I, I was just pulling something else up, but um, but yeah. So it, it really is a concern 
um, that uh, uh, people understand that we have, uh, uh, in this country at least, we do have the right to control over our over various aspects, you know, our right to privacy and so on and so forth. And that uh, when religious uh, institutions push for laws to legislate those that morality they teach in the church, it oversteps, they overstep their bounds. I think so. You know, I, I just, with so many people speaking out, I mean, this, you hear time and time again, you hear um, people, you, you hear stars coming out of the closet mm -hmm. and saying, okay, yeah, I, you know, by the way, I was gay. And, right. You know, um, and I'm proud of that. And, that, and then we, once that happens, then you have another company or another something or other saying, well, we don't support gay marriage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously the fact that, that homosexuals are starting to appear to have a, a more uh, secure place in society. Mm -hmm. However, I, I, I still think that there are a lot of implications and there's a lot of homosexuals out there who are, ch you know, trying very hard to deny who they truly are, their, their, their uh, sexual identity, mm -hmm. because there's still so many implications in this society right. of being a homosexual, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and that's a shame. And it, it, you know, it hurts that person. And, and, and in, in the end, it does hurt society mm -hmm. as a whole, that people cannot feel free to discover their true identities and feel free to be who they are. And isn't that what we wanted for this country? People to have more of a freedom. Right, exactly. To, you know, and yet we systematically want to deny people these freedoms across the board. We don't want you to have the right to do this. We don't want you to have the right to do this. And again, a government that can tell you that you can't do something is a government that can tell you that you have to do something. Right. You know, it goes both ways. Exactly. You know, so you're passing these laws with, the, oh, yes, we want the government to step in and say this can't happen. Well, guess what? One of these days the government might just change their mind and say, yes, it can happen, and by the way, it will. And that'll be the law now. Right. You know. And, and that's, that's pretty much where we're going with this. It's just, it's just really sad. Well, you know what, though? Um, for those who maybe are a little unsure of themselves and stuff. We have Harrisburg Pride coming up. Yeah, this, in, uh, in this weekend on Saturday. Um, we, are, we will have a booth at uh, the Harrisburg Pride Festival uh, along the river. And uh, please stop by, say hi. Um, we, uh, we would love to talk to you. Um, oh, absolutely. And if you want to call in right now and, you know, say, absolutely not, I won't be there. This is not my cup of tea. <laughs> that's fine. And if you want to call in and say, hey, you know, where am I going to find your booth? Call in. And, and you know, at the Lancaster Pride, that was a very exciting day. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of smiles. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just a very fun time. And, and so, you know, come on out. And, and you can really see that, that it's just a, a lot of fun. And it's just people. Yeah. Exactly I, right. It, it's just people. They're no different from you, really. Right. And, 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 and you know, I, I love going to uh, the Pride Festivals. I've been to several of, uh, of uh, the ones we've had booze at, and uh, I love going around there. There's a lot of fun and, and uh, music and things to see and buy and, and all that other stuff, and it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, so. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's it's um, a lot of people still seem to have this um, negative opinion on homosex on homosexuals. Mm -hmm. You know, like they they do something different with their life. Well, actually, right. they don't do anything different with their life. Right. Whatever you see yourself doing is pretty much what they do. They go home. They balance their checkbook. They go shopping. You know. It, they're no different. I, I, the only difference is is their sexual preference. Right. You know, and and by the way, you know, most most nights, you know, they probably end the night with a glass of wine, and the TV goes off, and it's time for bed. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and does that sound like anybody we know? Possibly you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just absolutely ridiculous uh, that 
that this is an issue. I mean, it's, it's the 21st century, folks. Um, welcome to it. Uh, it's time to, you know, join the rest of us uh, and uh, realize that, you know, the, the march of, of history moves uh, ever towards uh, uh, the rights for, for people as a group, you know. If you are going to hold on to outmoded notions of uh, morality and uh, divisions of, the, you know, artificially constructed divisions of, of people, if you're going to hold on to that, you're going to be left in the dustbin of history. I mean, uh, along with those outmoded notions. And, you know, you know, come join us. It's a lot of fun in the 21st century. Um, There's a lot we, to offer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'd love to have you. You know, all you got to do is just, you know, lay aside all of those preconceived notions that you have and, and, and learn a, bit, a little bit about the, the people around you. And uh, I, I think people would be better off for that. Absolutely. You know, just, I, I don't know what people are afraid of. Or are we afraid that, that, um, that by allowing homosexual marriage, we're going to have an influx of people going in the parks and, and so to speak, making out? Well, we don't really have that now, right? You know, and that's not going to happen for any other any other time, right? You know, I mean, for the most part, I, I what I see when I walk down the street and stuff like that is people are very respectful, mm -hmm. uh, and they of other people, and right. they don't, you know, show a lot of um, over. I guess they they don't make a lot of intimate contact, mm -hmm. you know, in public. They, they do save that for um, other places, more private areas, not in the middle of the street. And that's not going to happen here, too. We're, we're not, you're not going to... It's just, it's not, it's going to be the same world. It's, it's, it, you're going to walk down the street and it's, everything's going to be the same. It's not going to change. And, you know, it's just, we, the only thing that's going to change is people will have the right to be with the one they love mm -hmm. and profess their love to them. Yeah. You know, in, in a legal, in in a legal sense, in front of their friends, in front of their family, um, that's basically all that's going to happen. Exactly. You know, um, and and it interests me how many people speak out against same-sex marriage, and yet um, Ellen DeGeneres, when she after she came out, you know, and she they televised their wedding. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to bet that so many people, religious and not religious, were just so much in support of this. Because who doesn't like Ellen DeGeneres, right? She was right. hilarious. Very funny person. So what's the problem? Like, you, you support that one, you know? I didn't hear a lot of slack about it or anything. I'm sure there was a lot, but... Yeah, I... You know, it's just... <laughs> You know, and, and and that marriage held, held as much interest for me as as the royal marriages. You know, I, I'm I'm not really one to watch marriage on TV. I, I guess I just like to watch other things. You know, um, but it didn't bother me any. <laughs> I didn't care. You know. Yeah, I, I'm pulling up one other story I wasn't going to cover today, but it seems appropriate. Um, I don't know how many of you knew. Uh, Sally Ride uh, passed away uh, Monday at age 61 of pancreatic cancer. And, you know, um, I think most people know that uh, uh, I'm looking at the, she was the uh, first woman. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. Uh, astronaut, uh, Amer first American woman in space. Um, she, uh, she was, uh, she's survived. Oh, come on, stop scrolling. Um, I remember reading about that. It's really sad. And uh, she was also uh, gay. Um, I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, and I was looking for her partner's name. But uh, anyway, the whole point is that, you know, she, she really advanced, uh, uh, you know, she broke through a glass ceiling for women, women in general, mm -hmm. you know, being part of the space program. And being the first American uh, woman astronaut, and fought, she was followed by many others. Um, but uh, she uh, she was also a, a big 
major deal scientist with with some decent credentials. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, so I, you know, she was uh, uh, praised by by many people uh, for her life and so on and so forth. But I, I thought that it's an interesting footnote uh, that that people might want to know about. Um, she. Uh, Anyway. So you're like, okay, you're looking for her partner's name. But yeah, eh, you know, but, but just so people know. Yeah. I, and and does that should that change our opinion of her? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely. And that's the, know, and that's the point. That she's still the first American woman in space. In space. Exactly. And that's still a big deal. Yeah, and and so so but that is the very point, you know, human beings are human beings and you know, they should be judged on their accomplishments and on the uh, what they contribute to society and what they contribute for themselves and and their skills and things like that. And things like what they do in the bedroom don't mean anything to anybody else except for the person they're in the bedroom with. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and, you know, and that goes for political figures as well. We always hear about all these political figures, well, this one did this with this. And th Is that really any of our business? No. Well, I mean, uh, in as much as uh, it reflects on their own honesty, uh, you know, as far I, as... I, I can see that point. I can know. see, you know, I mean, you, you know, fidelity is, a, is, a, is an important concept yeah. in, in politics, although I don't think many of them really honor are that. Are very... <laughs> you know, you know are, are, it, it would be nice, but... So, I mean, I can see that if you can't be faithful to other commitments... Right. How do we know you're going to be faithful to um, us as a as a population, as right. a society? Right. But so. but if you take a politician who is otherwise doing a very good job, and that their only political faux pas is that they uh, didn't fit the mold of what we expected them to be in their personal lives, um, I, I don't I don't think that that automatically should be reflective of, of whether they can do the job they've been hired to do. I mean, it doesn't matter what job it is, you know. It, it is, but I use the word automatically because it could have some bearing. I mean, there, there could be a reasonable line you could draw. Uh, but I, I think that for the most part that it's, you know, it's their own personal. It is. Business. Well, think of it this way. If you had a political figure that um, I'm sure they wouldn't want to come out with the fact that they might be a swinger. Mm -hmm. them and, and their 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 partner and and uh, of course they're going to want to keep that right to themselves and there's no you know there's as far as we know there's no loss there's no um um commitment being broken there's, yeah. these are just consensual adults engaging in something that is more satisfying to them right do is that our business no you know <laughs> that i mean that is just not our business and and that should their personal lives, a, my, a lot of their personal lives, should not be brought up. You know, I, I, I just get tired of the personal attacks. Right. Because it's, it, you know, I don't really, I, what I want to know is what are you going to do for this country? Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to uphold the Constitution? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, that's what I want to know. That, that's what I want from my political figures. Right. You know, I, I honestly, um, their private beliefs and practices should stay there, private. And when they walk into the political forum, they should check them at the door. Exactly. And you can come back for them when, when you're done. Right. When you're done dealing with matters of the country, mm -hmm. you can go back and say, well, you know, put on your intolerant hat if that's what you have. And, right. you know, whatever is your cup of tea. But as long as it's not brought out on the on the political floor, because it, it's just it it's just I I guess I've, I it's a it's a topic that really means something to me, because I think it, it really is just hurting a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, taking people's freedoms away. All that does is hurt people, and all that does is is just it, it creates more um, it creates more problems. Exactly. Than it's solving, it, you know. I mean, let, let's. You know, let's take, for example, the fact that alcohol was a legal drug, and then all of a sudden they took that away. Mm -hmm. So we had this whole period of time. Well, did alcohol stop getting made? No. Was it, was it, was, it was still available, and it became worse. Now, I'm not trying to make an argument for um, 
drugs to become legal. I would. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would make that argument. But, but uh, well, no, I mean, it, it's along the same, I mean, for, I don't know, I think that there is, is lines when it comes to health and, and, and well-being, but, I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, I think that our, our country's drug policy needs uh, an overhaul. Um, there are plenty, uh, you know, it, it, and in some ways, especially when you refer to, to drugs like, like marijuana, you're, you're talking, you've got essentially, okay, so here, you know, back in the, the, the prohibition period, what you had was an organized crime uh, syndicate or syndicates built up around uh, the sale, distribution, uh, and manufacture of alcohol. Because it wasn't legal, what you did was you, you made it illegal and you made it uh, dangerous and risky and, and so on and so forth. And which, profitable. And profitable for people who, uh, uh, to, to, to do what they need to do. It's the same thing with the war on drugs right now. Um, yes, alcohol is dangerous. Drugs can be dangerous. And responsible use of alcohol and or drugs is, is very important. But by the same token, uh, it's irresponsible to just move those things off into the realm of, oh, they're illegal, and let's go ahead and create this criminal subculture that uh, causes more uh, violence, crime, uh, and everything else based around these, these things that human beings are going to want to do for themselves and to themselves. You, you know, you know it's going to happen, so why not tax pot and sell it legally? Uh, why not, you know, why not treat people who are addicted to drugs like you treat people who are addicted to alcohol? And that is have treatment for them rather than throwing them into jail. I mm -hmm. mean, it doesn't make sense. Right. Well, we do have treatment. We do have Narcotics Anonymous. I, I understand. But which, uh, of course, I'm not really for 12-step programs, but. Well, that's true. But, but the point I was trying to make, though, is that um, drugs have the additional uh, uh, quality of being a crime. And therefore, if you're caught with the drugs, you've got jail rather than treatment. Exactly. You know? Yes. Well, you know, uh, interestingly, a lot of drug dealers out there, a lot of them, they're not really interested in doing the drug. They're just interested in profiting off of it. Well, yeah. And yeah. if you taxed them... Um, Imagine the revenue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, you, I see that national debt going down. Look, <laughs> you know? end the expenditures on the war on drugs. Tax them. Uh, look, at, look at cigarettes. Um, cigarettes have uh, been... They've had taxes go up and up and up, and laws uh, concerning where and how you can smoke are on the rise, and as a consequence, cigarette use is on the decline. So if you want to deal with it in a way that allows for the individual freedom to do whatever you want to do with your own body, then what you do is you use controls like taxes and, uh, and re taxes and, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm just blanking. Uh, we both we both had that that problem today. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you use those control. Oh, taxes and social controls. Okay. Uh, you know, saying well, yeah, you can smoke pot. You can't smoke pot in the movie theater. You can't smoke pot at your business. These are things that are already common sense. You can't do, but if you pass the law and say, well, okay, you can use pot in a proper time and place. You can use cigarettes in a proper time and place. You can use alcohol in a proper mm -hmm. time and place. Exactly. That removes the criminal element because you're, you're, make, you're making it not be a crime right. uh, or at least not a serious crime. And, and it, it, you know, and, and let, let's, we're, we were taking things from an economic standpoint at one point. Let's face it, 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 it definitely does allow for an additional tax on something that's not going to burden the rest of society. Mm -hmm. This is just um, a, a tax on this particular element, you right. know, and, and that's what they've done with cigarettes. And, you know, I think what, what we've pretty much managed to accomplish in, in the past hour is basically uh, figure out how to increase revenues by 
allowing same-sex marriages. We've we've have some proof that that works. Yes. You know, I mean, we you know just look to New York City. I mean, and it, I mean it is true. I mean, it's what a, what a great town to get married in. That and and um, you know, in Nevada, you know, all of a sudden the name is but. What a great place to get married. So Yeah. So we know that, you know, marriage is big business and we can get our revenues there. And now we we also have this this new additional tax on a now legal drug. Right. <laughs> you know. Well, I think we've pretty much just succeeded in in boosting the economy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, g- just helping out the the American families here, you know, all those middle class families that pay too much in taxes. Well, here we got we got the solutions. I just don't think they want to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a little bit less than five minutes left, and so I figured we'll go over uh, upcoming events. Um, Jen already mentioned that we're going to be at Pride Fest uh, this Saturday. Uh, we'd love to meet you. We'd love you for you to come out and say hi. Um, we also have our York meeting on August fourth. Uh, it is at the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church in the back in the carriage house. Uh, that runs from 10 a.m. till noon. Uh, we have our, uh, then we have also our Lancaster meeting tomorrow night. Uh, that is uh, at the Isaacs on Man- off of Mannheim Pike. Uh, we have our Lebanon meeting, uh, which is actually in Anvil at the uh, Anvil Hosses at uh, 7 o'clock on the 8th of August. Um, we also, our next show uh, is up there on, on the screen as well at Tuesday, August 14th at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, you're welcome to join us. Uh, please do. Have those phones ready. Come have on in. have the it. phones ready. Give us a call. Let us know what you think. Um, I have one more big announcement uh, for those who are watching of, of the Freethinker community and for anybody who else who is interested. We're going to be putting together, we, and by we I mean Pennsylvania non-believers, is going to be uh, working on a, we are working right now on putting on an uh, atheist humanist convention in Harrisburg at the Crown Plaza Hotel. There's information on, uh, the website is atheistpa.org. Uh, shortly, we'll be have uh, ticket sales going up. Uh, right now, it just has information about the conference itself. Uh, it's going to be at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Harrisburg the weekend of September 28th through 30th. Uh, that's the last weekend of September. And uh, we'll have uh, Dan Barker, uh, who is the president of the Freedom for Religion Foundation. Uh, they're notable for... Uh, being involved in a few lawsuits around the country. Uh, One right here in Pennsylvania. A t- couple right here, here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, there's one regarding ten, a Ten Commandments mon- monument out towards Pittsburgh. Uh, and then there is a, a lawsuit against the Year of the Bible, which many of you are already familiar with. Um, so Dan Barker is going to be here. Uh, Dave Silverman, who is the president of American Atheists, he's probably most famous for... Uh, being on the O'Reilly show for O'Reilly, the, the tide uh, goes in, <laughs> tide comes out. You can't explain that. And uh, uh, that was uh, talking to Dave Silverman on the show uh, where uh, he's got his rage face meme, which is uh, uh, fun. And, uh, and, and then some, some other speakers as well. We're going to be working on our speaker list and finalizing them over the next few weeks. So keep an eye on that website. Again, that URL is atheistpa.org uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be putting up updates as we have them and uh, we'd love to have you come out and join us and it should be a great time and, and we're really looking forward to that. Um, I, I think we're coming up on our clock here very yeah, shortly we, here. We might want to quick mention the um, fb.com slash Pennsylvania nonbelievers if you want to make any comments or um, you know join us or